Hi, my name is Jason Knight, and I'm a PhD student at Texas A&M University, and I've written this software for classification of sequencing data using Bayesian optimal techniques. And I'm going to show you basically an overview of what the software is, how to get it, how to build it, um, an overview of the different folders, and a small example using some uh, simulated data. So let's get started. So you can find uh, the software here on GitHub um, at my page, and then it's called SAMCNet. Uh, there's a link to it from the paper. That that's probably why you're here. And uh, first of all, you can see the documentation down here, or at least some of it, and some steps to install it uh, in a recent version of Ubuntu uh, Linux. And if you're running on Windows, then you can probably get this working there too, but uh, given how difficult it is to get all the different Python libraries up and running, then it's probably best to go and just install a virtual machine with Ubuntu, or just install Ubuntu uh, in general anyway, because it's awesome. Uh, so the, the main uh, gist of this is to install a bunch of the different libraries and Python um, uh, services that are needed here and then to get the code through git uh, through github so i already have the libraries installed so let's just start by grabbing the source code for this repository here so we download the repository and uh, here it says to uh, initialize submodules but uh, we don't need to do that here because we're actually just using a small subset for the classification that doesn't need that uh, so let's Let's just go through here. Um, so we have a new folder, SAMCNet, and as you can see, the folder structure is the same as what's shown here on the GitHub page. And uh, basically, um, uh, these are dependencies that aren't, again, necessary for classification. Uh, these are the experiment files that were actually used to generate the uh, plots on the paper. Uh, the, the RNA-seq optimal Bayesian classification paper. Uh, these are some things not needed for classification. Uh, and again, and then this is actually where most of the source code is in here. Um, and there's more than necessary because the classification actually only uses some of it. And then some tests, which is where our example is going to be. Um, and this is the documentation. This is the uh, build script configuration file and this is the actual build script itself um, so to, to build it you first um, configure using this build management tool called WAF and it checks your system for all the different uh, tools and libraries that you need uh, and if if there's red one that says no or could not find then obviously go and you know, go back to the github page install that and try to figure out what's going on there moving forward. Uh, then just WAF will build it and it'll do it all in parallel. And right here it's actually uh, converting to the Python, some of the Python files to C files and then compiling those into shared libraries to make it run faster uh, through Cython. And just ignore all these um, warnings here, they're not important. Okay, now we've got it built and if we look here we now have this new folder called build. And if we go into build, or even just look inside of it, you'll see uh, here we're only building two shared objects. One for Metropolis Hastings MCMC, and one for the specific model that we're going to be using uh, to fit to our data. And so, uh, let's say we have some data. Um, for example, uh, here I have, um, in the test folder, you can find uh, example data 0 and 1 uh, and predict. And if we look at those, um, here in data 0 we just have four samples with the samples being the rows, uh, each one having three um, features, which in this case for RNA-seq it's mostly genes, and so this would be the number of reads mapping onto gene 1, gene 2, gene 3. Um, and if you want to name, if, if these have you know, column names and row names, and that's fine too. It'll just be a little bit different how you read it in. Um, and then class one is right here, 
You can see it also has four, but they don't have to be the same. Here, let's add another one just to make things interesting and make some changes here. Okay. Um, and really, I just, I've made up some numbers for these, but if you can see the first column's higher in class zero, and here it's lower in class one. So we'll use that uh, here in our prediction. This is some data that we now have. Um, and we are interested in knowing whether this, each of these samples comes from class zero or class one. And that one could come from one class and this would come from another. And so they're completely independent from each other um, as far as the prediction is concerned. And so once we have our data like this, we need a little driver program to read it in and then perform the classification. And if you look in X, uh, actually example.py, then you can see here we have a little program that will read the data in and then do some uh, MCMC fitting and then do some prediction. Uh, so we import uh, just pandas library in order to read in these those data files really easily. Then uh, the Metropolis Hastings module here and the mixture Poisson model here. Um, and here we read in our data and prediction data and it's basically just reading in CSVs without headers um, and then once we have that we initialize two instances of this variable one for each class of basically the MPMP model um, and, or the distribution essentially and we just pass it in our training data um, for this class and this class and then we create a classifier uh, from those two distributions. Um, and then we create a Metropolis Hastings run instance, uh, passing in the classifier that we want to uh, train using the MCMC. And then uh, MCMC basically does a number of iterations. And we throw away the first 1,000 here, the burn in iterations. And we only keep every 50th iteration because there's correlation between iterations. And uh, so it's unnecessary to keep all of them. It doesn't hurt. It just uh, saves space computationally and otherwise. And then we want to see things printing out since we're just showing a little demo here. So we're both equals true. And then um, once we've set up that Metropolis Hastings, uh, variable, then we can run us uh, do some MCMC sampling. Here we're doing 10,000. Uh, then once we've sampled that, that's basically training the classifier. And so at this point, we can use the classifier to predict uh, what our predict samples uh, would be here. Uh, and we have to pass in the uh, Metropolis Hastings database in order for it the the classifier to know what uh, training data it should be and in MCMC samples it should be using to make that prediction. And then we just close the database in order to close files and clean up after ourselves. So if we run this, I recommend going and running it in IPython, uh, which is a great Python interpreter. Then um, you can use a little magic command called run here to just say run tests example.py. And if you run that, then it tells us that, um, oh, okay. So actually, here it warns us that we're assuming the class conditional densities are equal, uh, or sorry, not class conditional, the uh, class marginal probabilities are equal. But we have training data sets that are not of equal size, which um, is fine, but it's something to keep in mind uh, for a number of uh, hard to explain but important reasons. And since this is the first time, I'll create a temporary directory. And then um, essentially the Markov chain Monte Carlo method starts at initial point, calculates the initial energy, and then starts moving around in space. And so every thousand iterations, it'll tell you at what energy, i.e. probability, uh, net negative log probability. Um, the current uh, instantiation of the model variables is at, 
the best instance we've seen and then it'll continue along there and then we have here at the end we had 3,000 moves uh, proposed moves accepted out of 10,000 total which gives us 37% um, which this acceptance ratio is an important uh, thing to keep your eye on when you're doing this uh, yourself because you want to have that number somewhere between uh, roughly 15 and 40. Um, there's actually, you can calculate optimal numbers, but only for small kind of simple examples. So in general, you just want it to be not really low or not really high because really low means that you're um, basically not moving much. You're kind of stuck. Uh, you're trying to make too big of jumps usually uh, around the space. And then too high means that you're wasting your jumps because you're not you're being too safe. You're moving in real small increments and not moving, exploring the rest of the space. And then here we printed out the uh, predictions for those three samples um, the, that we don't know which class they came from. And if you look back here at the, the values, we have these two samples are low first columns and this one's a high first column and so it, it predicted zeros for the first two and ones for the second one so that's pretty much just what we'd expect um, so in conclusion you know this is a very brief overview and I haven't covered anything like performance evaluation against other classifiers uh, but you can see an example of those in the exps uh, folder if you want uh, there's also synthetic data generation that's possible here. Um, we have, there's a whole topic, actually subfield of MCMC tuning diagnostics. Uh, and then there's implementing your own models. Um, but all those will, based on user demand, we'll have to wait for later videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. And feel free to email me any questions. My email, uh, I'll put it on the documentation if it's not there already. And uh, thanks for watching.